Euh, autre sujet euh, tout aussi Another equally important topic, as important as uh, browsing on, on a Forgan site, as I said yesterday, security, confidentiality, these are important issues on the internet today, especially for end users. Now, regarding security, there are many aspects of that in Forgan's technology and even in terms of Forgan's addresses. And one aspect is to prevent any confusion affecting Forgan's addresses. To speak about that, I'll be calling up a part of the development team in charge of technical specification for OP3FT, Véronique Dejeur, the development project manager at OP3FT, as well as Damien Arnoux, who is the head of development, and Benjamin, whom we saw yesterday, and he is the head of technical specifications. I'll lend you my mic. Thank you. It should be easier for you, I guess. Benjamin. I will switch to English briefly so that Benjamin can tell us more about the anti-confusion mechanisms. Alors, je, je fais ma programmation avant, excusez-moi. OK. Hi, Benjamin. Hello. Thank you very much. And um, can you briefly remind us what you mean by confusion? Sure. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say hello again. Uh, welcome to everyone, <clears throat> whether you're here in, in the room or listening over the web. Um, tonight, we want to talk a little bit more about security and uh, the use of Frogan's addresses. Uh, in particular, concerning uh, the one area which is the confusion and confusability of addresses, possibility of spoofing. Um, as you know, as you're beginning to hear more and more about, Froggen's addresses thanks, uh, are available in several uh, different languages. They can be written with various writing systems. Um, however, this opening, which we provided, uh, which we think is an important advance uh, for Froggen's addresses, we want to to make that available to our users. Uh, it does uh, offer some potential pitfall pitfalls concerning two addresses which look alike, uh, which are visually confusing. Uh, there are different types of confusability. Uh, the first type would be within a single writing system. You can have certain characters which look very similar. For example, in the Latin writing system, we have the uh, letters I, one, and lowercase l which are all very similar and can be confusing to the eye if you look quickly at uh, an address. Second type of confusion is between two different writing systems. For example, <clears throat> if you're writing, have an address written in the Latin writing system or the Cyrillic writing system, several letters have look exactly alike. Here the lowercase letter A, for example, in Latin and Cyrillic, are Im practically impossible to distinguish to the human eye. Finally, there's a third type of confusion, which is possible, concerning characters in two, um, in a, a language with more than one writing system. For example, in Chinese, uh, there are two types of Chinese. There's the traditional Chinese and the simplified Chinese. Uh, the same, same two, two characters, uh, which may basically mean the same thing, uh, the top one and the bottom one. I'm afraid I, my Chinese is not good enough to be able to either pronounce them or tell you. Uh, how to say them in Chinese, but they have very similar meanings and they're just written in two different manners. But for a Chinese person, they would think they're talking about the same word. So that's another possibility of confusion. So these, all these uh, raise possible security issues because someone could, could, you could think you're going on one site, for example, a site PayPal written with a, a, a letter case, a, a letter A in Latin. Someone replaces the letter A in Latin with the letter A in Cyrillic, and you end up on a wrong side. 
you hand over your, your bank card IDs and you're in trouble. Thank you, Benjamin. And um, how does the Frogance addressing system manage confusion? Okay, well, the next slide gives us a, a first, first step at that approach. Um, one of the primary uh, mechanisms we use is to differentiate the, the intended language or writing system for a given address. Hence, when you, re when you register a Frogans network or a Frogans site, the first thing you must tell it is what is the linguistic, linguistic category for which your address will be used. Now, we have defined 10 different linguistic categories um, which support are designed to support as many of the world's writing systems as possible. Uh, with these 10, 10 linguistic categories, uh, which you've, you see here, um, cover around 179, about 180 different languages worldwide. So there is a, a large possibility. And when you define which linguistic category you're talking about, it gives an intention already of what, the, what characters are available to be used in that category. Each, each linguistic category has its own rules about which code points, which characters can be included in an address. Uh, this is the first important step to avoiding problems with confusability. Um, the, the one important point I want to make, however, is that the linguistic category concerns only the address, the network name and the site name. You can, of course, in a given site and a slides for a site like the ones Philippe showed earlier on. You can absolutely have several languages on your site. You can have one site which has, a, let's say, a Chinese address, which has one page in Chinese, another page in Korean, and a third page in Japanese. That's no problem whatsoever. The system, again, the linguistic editor concerns only the identifier of the address and not the content of the slides of that address. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you. Uh, no. I'm ready for a demonstration. Okay. okay. I'm happy to, to pass the mic over to Véronique Dujeux, who works in, in the, the, a very important member of the development team and the implementation team, who makes all this theory that we're talking about become a reality. So, Véronique, it's your turn. And I think we'll, on va passer en français, si vous voulez bien. Bonsoir. Merci beaucoup. Good evening. I'm not here to make a long speech. Uh, we'll move on right away to a demo on practical cases about the mechanisms for uh, Frogan's addresses for security, safety purposes, security purposes, rather. I will ask Damien, who is our person in charge of uh, development activity, who will be acting as my assistant tonight. I will ask him to launch the presentation, the demo, actually. So they're currently um, getting the system connected. So Veronique will be looking at different examples of um, risks of confusability in the character string that would be used in a fragrance address. We'll be um, looking at different types of um, confusion or potential confusion and how it will be either rejected or accepted or simply rejected for a reason that is impossible. You can, you are not allowed to enter this type of character string in a Frogan's address or rejected because it already exists elsewhere. Another character string that could be uh, confusing with uh, another uh, uh, address that could create some confusion in the minds of users. Therefore, in case of doubt, it's better to uh, avoid it. So the first mechanism, indeed, is about the validity of a Frogan's address. So to start with, uh, the, the idea is to avoid r registering addresses that could be potentially confusing or uh, could potentially confused with one another. Um, first, uh, there is a problem with characters that look very much alike. For instance, the word video that could be of a network name could be written in different ways. In this particular example, the accent on the French E was entered with one single character. You can see in this particular application that the characters were keyed in, were entered, and, how shall I say, identified with their codes in, in the Unicode sense. Uh, 
which is uh, at the bottom of that um, page here. If you look at this more uh, precisely, in fact, this uh, is, e is equal to one single character, which is the uh, accented um, E in French. This type of writing is a normalized, a standardized form, which will be accepted for a fragrance address. However, if you should decide to enter this uh, fragrance address uh, differently, which is actually possible by entering two uh, different sequences of characters, a simple E followed by an accent, there's two separate characters for one, then you will have an address that will not be uh, authorized as a fragrance address. We are here talking about um, equivalent um, uh, characters because, in fact, it is a character or a set of characters that have the same meaning but visually appear to be uh, well, uh, are could, uh, totally identical, in fact, here. I challenge you to differentiate them. But they are different from a... Benjamin, you were tell, tell, telling us about the Unicode Consortium yesterday, which is this organization which uh, a few years back made us gamble of association with every single existing char character, a unique character called the uh, code point, as you showed us, um, Veronique, U plus a character string. And it so happens that the E has a code point and that the accent also has a code point and the accented E has another code point. So, with this standardization system, we can uh, remove a certain number of uh, spoofing cases. So, a uh, user uh, registering video with two characters, uh, uh, a knee followed by an accent, will be rejected. The second case that we could be looking at, for which we have a security me mechanism, is about the use of characters regarded as not too common and not frequently used in common languages. For instance, uh, hello with two simple L's, you will have no problem as a holder of a network, and you will be uh, getting all these characters being accepted. However, if you should uh, choose uh, within the same script system or writing system to use two Latin characters looking very much alike, but which are not actually the same, then you will uh, be rejected. And this, in fact, is something uh, done at the level of the Latin uh, linguistic category, where we are very careful to build in uh, characters uh, that are not liable to spoofing. Well, I'm told that it's not an L that we see, but a Yota. Uh, well, it's difficult to tell. Yeah, it's, a, it's a Latin Yota, which is used in cases like certain African languages, for instance, use this character. So anyway, our linguistic categories, uh, by virtue of the character sets that they use and that they authorize, allow us to uh, offer a first level of security. Well, precisely, Benjamin, Benjamin uh, without putting it in the same Way was uh, talking about those uh, smart guys who uh, you may uh, uh, putting A's and a lot of A's in PayPal. Where does the subtlety of spoofing lie in this case? Well, this is a, con a rather conventional case uh, where uh, the word PayPal is written only with Latin characters. There have been cases of spoofing over time whereby some people try to register a domain name PayPal with an A, which is not a Latin character, but a Cyrillic character. Therefore, its um, code, its Unicode is different. And based 
on the uh, recommendations of the Unicode standard, uh, which uh, uh, specifies that different characters, script characters, should not be mixed together in uh, an address. Therefore, uh, in most cases, uh, fragrance addresses do not allow mixing uh, different uh, scripts. Uh, there are exceptions for certain uh, languages, such as uh, Chinese, uh, Korean, and Thai, which will allow for certain Latin characters to be used. Now, starting from this um, exception, as you call it, what about the, someone who would be using Latin characters while having chosen a uh, program's address in the Chinese linguistic category? Well, in fact, we have uh, allowed for a few uh, Latin characters to be used A to Z in both lower and uh, other cases because they are currently or commonly used, but or for a network named the linguistic categories will impose a number of rules, uh, context-based rules, that will uh, require that at least one Chinese character's be, uh, character be used in these addresses. So here, for instance, you will not be able to register a network name without a native Chinese uh, ideogram character. So uh, these were several cases where the person trying to register these examples of character sets would be as, uh, excused. Yeah, they would be uh, asked to, uh, invited to use another. But there's another case where we will not tell them that it's impossible to register this character string, but we'll uh, be telling them that uh, there's this character string that looks very much with what they want to register that has already been registered, therefore they are not allowed to do so. Well, this is the first in, first served policy that will uh, prevail. The the, ca the most well, the simplest cases uh, that you could all think of is a visual, visual confusion within the same uh, linguistic category. Um, uh, this is the next case. In fact, the simplest case is the use of the, the lower and upper cases for a fragrance address, uh, one that is written in lower case and one in upper case uh, is uh, one and the same. It's the same um, address. So if you want to register an address or network name, uh, you will be offered to use one case, but uh, lower or upper case, but beyond this, all networks uh, registered with the same case cannot be uh, um, registered by another holder. To handle this mechanism, we uh, define um, transformations of forms on addresses and networks, and it's, uh, it takes only only two network names or program addresses to have the same form, like a reference form, for it to be considered as convergent and therefore in conflict. Therefore, the first address that would be registered uh, would uh, bar any other address that have the same type of reference to be uh, from being uh, registered in their turn. There, to put it more simply, uh, for a reference form, a reference form, therefore, uh, is that in low case, and we see that these uh, two networks have the same reference form, therefore, that it cannot be uh, living in the same one and the same world. Uh, so it shows that you can register um, character, um, capital letters in the progress address, for Latin languages at least in those uh, scripts where it is possible to have uh, uppercase uh, characters, which is not the case with Chinese, for instance, but the first who will um, uh, reserve uh, a character with or without uh, capital letters will prevent others from using the same. Just one uh, um, subtlety, the concept of uh, lower and upper cases is more complex than it seems. Uh, because, in fact, we're, we use a case folding where, with specific cases like this one, the sharp character, which is one that is used in Germany, is equivalent to a dull less uh, 
as an, and also considered as a case, upper lower case. So, if you register a, a name with Strasse with this uh, SZ uh, character or Strasse with double S, uh, they, the second one will be rejected on the, by virtue of uh, being equivalent to the, the first one. So, in a way, you'd say that it's a bit of pity for those who cannot register their own character strings with the capital letters because somebody has already registered this in low case, but that's life after all. What is more interesting, perhaps, is that we will pre prevent confusion uh, for people who want to use certain characters instead of others because they look alike. Uh, yes, the visual confusion played a great role in uh, spoofing attacks in particular. and. Uh, great work was uh, done to detect all visual confusions. Uh, co typical case is this one. That is, two network names that look very much alike. Um, because here you have a, a, a ho that looks very much like a zero, visually speaking. But Favre will detect it and will be able to tell that these two network names are converging and cannot uh, coexist. Uh, the first one will be accepted, not the second one. So we also use convergence forms that allow us to detect this type of uh, visual confusion and to uh, fragrance names or uh, set names that would have the same type of convergence cannot be allowed together, which is the case here. Very, I'm told that we need to uh, speed up a little bit. So, Damien, can we look at another example of a visual uh, confusion, not maybe as obvious, but you in the room maybe will realize this. Yeah, here we have an M, which visually looks like an R followed by an N. And and this is this is another example. Who's, whoever has reserved Ami will uh, prevent other people to from using Arnis uh, if uh, their ambition was to be confused uh, with friends. Well, confusion is not only a matter of uh, uh, visual confusion or the number of uh, uh, glasses of whiskey you've been drinking, so it's also semantics. You know, in particular, Fakra uh, manages variance in the. Uh, Chinese linguistic category. Uh, for instance, we do mapping uh, between a Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese character and its simplified Chinese equivalent. An example that I could give you is this one, a character which it cho, cho, which means ugly. I couldn't find anything better than this. It looks really nice for uh, something that means uh, ugly, actually. And it, in fact, Faker will detect that it means exactly the same thing, that one is as ugly as the other and will not allow both to live in the same world. So we're not talking about visual confusion, but we're talking about semantic. Well, it's not semantic, it's graphic confusion. Another risk of confusion uh, would be to be zigzagging between uh, linguistic categories. Yes, because, in, I mean, up to now we were showing you examples of two addresses, two network names within the same linguistic category. But, of course, spoofing may be found on Frogan's addresses in different linguistic categories. For instance, uh, between the Latin word scope and the Cyrillic uh, word that we'll be using visually uh, similar or confusable uh, characters, but that are written in Cyrillic language. Now, if you, I don't know if you can tell from afar, but here we have an, an S, a Latin S. Here is a Cyrillic character. The following are just of the same ilk. They are visually confusable and identical. And However, they are not the same. So maybe we could conclude by saying that 
There are uh, different anti-confusion mechanisms. We showed you a few so that you could get a flavor of this, but there's more to it than just this. There are some spoofing cases of confusion that cannot be avoided only by means of a technique. And no, we cannot handle whatever is grammatical, the plural form, the spelling. Uh, very simple cases cannot be handled from a technical point of view by a FACR, to put it politely. For instance, FACO cannot identify this uh, solution versus or, or organization with a Z and an S. You know, for instance, that's another case between British English and American English. Cannot be detected. All the stations uh, that you find in English with a NAS or a Z, depending. This type of mechanism is too complex to implement. Fortunately, we have legal solutions to address these or this type of problem. Thank you, Veronique. It gives us a very nice springboard to uh, uh, what we'll be talking about later on. You mentioned FACR and AFAP, which are two technical specifications produced by OP3FT, and which you can find on those websites and which embody precisely what um, Veronique was telling you about and what Benjamin was uh, explaining earlier. These are technical specifications, very interesting uh, technical specifications. But amongst other things, in the introductions, you'll find um, some material contents related to spoofing and the reason why it was so important to work on the programs addresses. Now, while you're here, Maybe we can take a few questions about these anti-confusion mechanisms in frozen stresses. Sean Emmanuel, if we have no questions, we can't force uh, questions out of the assembly. No, yeah, there's one question here. Um, if I'd like to know if this uh, anti-confusion system would be uh, crossed against all three uh, categories. Yeah, could you uh, make it clear? Yeah. I'd like to know whether, if you uh, someone has reserved a network name, right? If someone wants to reserve the same word but as a program site name, would the anti-confusion system work as well? Yes, it would be possible. Uh, the answer is to uh, register a site name. Uh, that looks like a network name. It would be possible, but globally, what's important is that the fragrance address not be confusable with another one. Um, do you have an example in mind? Suppose someone registers a network name called Hello. Therefore, there will be a number of a uh, number of addresses called. Uh, Hello, star sign, site one, site two, etc. Um, that doesn't mean that, well, a right holder could uh, register a site name that would be called Hello on the uh, Frogans public network. They will be able to create a Frogans star sign Hello because these various addresses will not be uh, potential liable to confusion. Thank you so much. Yet yeah, we do have another question. Uh, right, so you, just now you were talking about the reservation booking of addresses or um, would that, or domain names, would that be the same for the DNS level resolution if a domain has been reserved with two S's, for instance, and a, a German uh, user would uh, enter uh, another one equivalent? Would, the link be made in the DNS resolution or just at the reservation time. Now, this will happen at the reservation time, at the registration time. The rules described here are registration rules. If you're talking about the shortcuts to click directly onto a frozen site, in fact, a DNS resolution there would be totally invisible to the user. So the question does not apply here. However, 
the Frogan's shortcut will use the pattern of the address that you have registered and it will immediately refer to whatever has been registered in the central database. Therefore, the confusion for resolution is handled directly from uh, the time of registration, but maybe I'm not answering your question. Uh, if an address in, is entered uh, with a player, um, in that case, yes, if you use uh, illegal characters in the player, the player will reject it, saying that this is not a fragment address. Jean-Emmanuel, there's one thing so he had to say, Damien, a point of detail. If uh, the user enters an address like it was Strasse, 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 uh, with the S set, and that the holder, the, the address has uh, registered it with two S's, resolution will be referring to this site with this technical uh, mechanism that we showed earlier, whereby the user typing with the two S's or the S's will be referred to the same site. Uh, take another example, a French example, say. The word, the word hello, which is actually English, if the site is hello in capital letters, there was registered by the right holder, and I, as the user of Frogan's Player, want to go to the site uh, by typing hello in lower cases. I will access the same site. Resolution will be by the via the reference, and will be accessing the same site. Great, super. Thanks a lot, Veronique, Damien, Benjamin.